Hi there, year uh, eight is now lesson two of week three of online learning. And uh, we're talking about En El Restaurante. So this is lesson two. So we're gonna build on what we did in lesson one. As a starter, please, can you find the words for the food, which are squished together here at the top, mm -hmm. um, the top two lines. Uh, I'll give you about four minutes, please. Write out the words and make sure you understand what they mean. There's also an extension and a challenge um, task at the bottom there. OK, so I'm assuming you paused if you needed to. And let's have a look at the words we've got. So the first word you should have is queso. Then you would have platanos. So queso is cheese, platanos are bananas. Then we had flan which we saw yesterday, which was the pudding, the milky uh, blumanji type pudding, like a bit like creme caramel, followed up by gambas, uh, which are prawns, as you know. Then sopa, which is soup, pollo, which is uh, uh, chicken. Two drinks here we didn't actually look at yesterday, but hopefully you'll have worked them out. Mino is uh, wine. Then we have uh, pescado, which is fish, uvas, grapes, helado, ice cream, naranjada. This is a different drink. We didn't you didn't see this yesterday. Uh, naranjada is um, uh, orange age, like fizzy orange. Leche is milk, and then we have jamón, um, ham. Let's just move this up a bit so you can see. Jamón, ham and agua is water. So um, hopefully you've got all those written down. The new ones there, as I say, are vino, wine, berreta, beer, naranjada, orangeade. And I think those are the only new ones, actually. OK, if you manage to work out what these were, those are asalbondigas, that's um, meatballs, I think. Pretty sure. And this one is here is a tortilla. It's a, a Spanish omelette made with potatoes. And the challenge, if you did this, it was to drink. I want two bottles of water, please. It would be para beber. Quiero dos botellas de agua, por favor. OK, so moving on then, you need to write the date and the title. The title is En el Restaurante, the same as in lesson one. And here are your objectives, which are also the same because they're running through the week. So we're looking at ordering food, writing a conversation, looking at the difference between tú and usted, and setting some targets. So first up today is the grammar. Now, a bit of grammar. So you need to write down um, grammar or grammatica. And this is the difference between the two um, ways of saying you in Spanish. So in Spanish, there are two words for you. Now, you need to please before I go through this, please write this down in full. I, we're using sort of red on the on the presentation to show you the difference. You can highlight, you can underline, uh, you can use a different color pen, I don't mind, but you need to distinguish between these two words for you. Um, the informal word for you is tu. And that's how you would relate to, refer to your friends or your parents, is how I uh, relate, uh, call you in class. You would probably also call me two in class. You'd use the two form of the verb. But in Spain, it would be more formal, actually. And you, you wouldn't be expected to speak to your teacher using two. You would use the formal address, which is usted. They both just mean you. So tú, usted, both mean you. One is informal and the other one is formal. So coming down here, it says tú is informal. It's used amongst friends, family members, or when adults are speaking to children. So what are you eating? ¿Qué comes? ¿Qué vas a comer? ¿Qué tomas? So these verbs here are all in the to form. Because normally it's not, that's just the word for you. But because they are different parts of the, um, of the verb, you need to think about your verb endings when you're um, using this. So I'm not explaining this very well. It's not, um, it would be, for example, you need to think about 
when you put together a word a phrase like what are you eating what are you going to eat what are you having the what are you eating what are you having will be a different form of the verb depending on whether it's someone you know or someone you don't okay so here's the usted uh it says it's used with people you don't know very well it's used in business or commercial relationships so um, in a in a shop, if I'm in a shop in Spain, nobody would say tu to me. They they would be respectful and it would be usted. It's a bit like we don't have a similar thing in in English. We have to add words like yes, how can I help you, madam, or how can I help you, sir, or how can I help you, miss, um, and that's how we we show that we're speaking respectfully. In Spanish, you use a different verb, form of the verb, and when you use usted, the verb has the L and a are endings. So it's the same ending as he, she, and it. So look carefully at this verb here, que comes. That's from the verb comer, which is an ER verb. So remember you, how you conjugate your verb. You have comer, you take off the ER. So step one, find the infinitive to eat, comer. Step two, take the ending off. So you're left with C-O-M is the stem. And then onto that, you add endings, depending on who's doing the action. Now, the endings for an ER verb are O, S, E, Emos, S, N. So for the U informal, it's O, S, E, S. But for usted, it's E. It's the he, she, it part of the verb. It's the same part as that. All right. So what are you eating? Que comes, if you know them well. Que come, if you don't know them. What are you going to, to eat? Que vas a comer, if you know them. If you don't know them, que va a comer. Que tomas, what are you having, if you know them well? Que toma usted, if you don't know them well. So can you please write that, copy that grammar down? It'll take you a few minutes, but you need to understand this. We have we probably touched on it in year seven, but we're revising it now and it's important in the topic we're using, because in a restaurant, it's um, it's like business or a commercial relationship. You would have uh, a respectful way of speaking to customers. Okay, so I'm pausing now, so I'm expecting you to stop the video, write this down and move on when you are ready. Okay, so we're moving on now, and we're going to put this into practice. So you're going to need to look at your notes. So I hope you've got them there. If you haven't, you need to write them down because you're going to need them now. So first of all, then, practica. What would you um, use in these situations? It says, using the general rules concerning the usage of tu and usted, decide which form is best when addressing your boyfriend. Obviously, you know your boyfriend well, you would call him tu. So write down numero uno a dos, uh, diez, Numbers one to ten, and decide, please, how you, would you uh, address these people? Your best friend, your Spanish teacher. This is assuming you're in Spain, okay? Right, so I'll give you some time to pause the video, write down the numbers one to ten, and tell me if you think it's two and usted. So, your best friend. It's obviously the person you're closest to. So it's two well, outside of your family. So two is your best friend, your Spanish teacher. And I did say that if in this country, you would probably say um, two possibly to me, but in Spain, you would definitely use usted. Your best friend's mother. This is the person who um, you end up moaning to about your own mum, isn't it? Um, or maybe you say to your mum, so and so's mum never does that. Um, they probably do the same. Your best friend probably says the same to her mother about you, about your mother, by the way. Um, okay, your dog, Pepe, you would call him too. Your school principal. Now, you would definitely refer to this person, male or female, as usted. So if you're speaking to Mrs. Sharman, um, you would use the usted part of the verb if you happen to be speaking Spanish. Mrs. Sanchez, your next door neighbour, that depends a bit. If you've known her forever, I put usted, but sometimes you know them, your next door neighbours very well. And if you've, uh, if you've known them for a long time, you know them very well, it might be too. But more, more likely it's going to be 
more formal instead, particularly if you call it Mrs. Sanchez, because you obviously don't know her that well. Your brother clearly is going to be two. Classroom facilitator, I don't know what that means really, but I've gone for usted because it's the same as your teacher. Your school bus driver, definitely usted. It's an adult, it's respectful, and you would call them usted. Your teacher's five-year-old son, however, and although it's your teacher's son, you wouldn't talk to your te the, the boy, the five-year-old boy, uh, in anything other than two, because they're younger than you, and it wouldn't, it would sound very odd. So you would call them two, even though it's your Spanish teacher's um, son, and you'll call your teacher usted. Okay, so, and then there was an extension of challenge. Other examples, I mean, people that you met, um, I don't know, the royal family walk in, you would definitely call them usted. Your pen pal though, you would call two because it's someone your own age that you're friendly with. Okay, so, a bit more practice. Can you please write the, write the right form, write the correct form of the verb, please? So I've given you the verb I want in, um, uh, brackets. So visitar is the first one. If we want the two form of visitar, then it's going to be visitas. Okay, there's your example. Right, um, pause the video when you're ready, write down the numbers one to ten, and just write down these verbs in the correct form, please. Remember, if it's usted, it takes the he, she, it part of the verb. Off you go. Okay, so it will have taken you a few minutes. You should have 10 verbs written down in Spanish, uh, either with the you singular verb ending or the he, she, it verb ending. The first one was visitas, usted, hablar, obli, habla, because it's the he, she, it part of the verb. Um, usted, descansa. Usted, baila. Tú. Remember, jugar is a stem-changing verb, so hopefully you've remembered that and you've got juegas. Tú. Escuchas. Back to usted. Mira. Usted. Practica. Practica. Back to tú again. Mandar. To send. Mandas. Usted. Compra. All right, so check that you have all of those right. Um, we've used all AR verbs, which is a bit strange, really. Um, should have used some other ones as well to make you really think about your verb endings. Um, okay, and the challenge there is what do you think ustedes means? Um, and if you are, should be shouting at the screen, it means the plural. So usted is one person, ustedes is more than one person. And if you are talking to lots of people that you don't know, so you're being formal, you would use the they part of the verb. So it would be usted compra, ustedes compran. Okay, good. So let's move on. And another piece of language you need to understand here. So we have two verbs here, or two phrases, tengo hambre and tengo sed. Now, the verb tener, you know well enough, and you know that it means I have. And this is one of the um, examples in, in uh, where we have a different verb used in English than we do in Spanish. Um, quite often in, in Spanish, you will use the verb tener with a noun, and that's what's happening here, tengo hambre. But in English, it translates as to be with an adjective. So tengo hambre means I'm hungry. Tengo sed, I'm thirsty. Okay, we tend to say I am with an adjective. I'm hot, I'm cold, I'm hungry, I'm sleepy, I'm thirsty. In Spain, you in Spanish, you would use the verb tener, to have, with a noun. So literally, I have hunger, I have thirst but it wouldn't translate like that, it would sound silly. So we translate it as, I am hungry, I am thirsty. Okay, so please write those down with their translations. I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. 
when you're ready, move on. And we're going to do a listening. Just checking that I'm sharing the sound with you. Yes, I am. So you're going to listen and fill the gaps, please. This gives you a, uh, a dialogue which you can uh, refer to uh, later on this week. So this person saying that they're hungry and they're going to be ordering things. But there are different words missing here. OK, and we will put those in in a minute. So um, here we go. Página 65. Ejercicio 3. Escucha y lee. Tengo a... Sorry, Sorry I'm just going to pause this. I should have said... You're, you've got control over this video, so you can go backwards and forwards and listen to this a couple of times if you need to. I'll just let it run through. Tengo hambre. Quiero un helado de chocolate. ¿Qué vas a tomar? Mm, no tengo hambre, pero tengo sed. Quiero una limonada. ¿Qué va a tomar? Un helado de chocolate, por favor. ¿Y usted qué va a tomar? Una limonada, por favor. ¿Algo más? Nada más. Eh, la cuenta, por favor. Ok, so you may have listened to that a couple of times. You may have got it straight away. Um, oh, sorry. Didn't do that. Uh, so, let's have a look and see. Um, the first one, tengo hambre, Alicia says. Quiero un, and it should be helado. Um, okay, helado, I can't spell now. Helado de chocolate. And then she says, que vas a tomar? Javier says, no tengo hambre, pero tengo sed. Quiero una limonada. Then we've got camarero comes on the scene. Now, who is the camarero, do you think? Write that down and then write the translation, which is a waiter. So, and actually, he doesn't say que vas a tomar. He says que va a tomar. Because he's using the usted form, which is polite, because he's speaking to his customers. So, que va a tomar. And Alicia says what she's decided, which is un helado de chocolate, por favor. And then the camarero says, y usted, que va a tomar? And Javier says, una limonada, por favor. And the waiter wants to know if he wants anything else. I can't seem to get over here, never mind. What is this then? So um, I've got mass. Making this very difficult. But Javier says no, nothing else. And the mass. La, and hopefully you got this as well. If you did, well done. It's la cuenta, por favor. So nothing else, the bill, please. La cuenta, por favor. And you saw that right at the very beginning of uh, lesson one. Um, now, there's a misspelling there. Um, challenge, can you find the future tense in the script? So where is it? And hopefully you found it is up here. Que va a tomar. What are you going to have? And there's also one here, what are you going to have? But because Alicia there is talking to Javier, she uses the two form. The camarero, the waiter, is talking to Alicia, so it says, que va a tomar? And here he's talking to Javier again, que va a tomar? What are you going to have? So that's the formal way of address. OK, so correct your work uh, in red pen, please, and then move on. Okay, so another listening here, and I want you to write down in Spanish what they order, please. So you may need to listen to this a couple of times. Página 
65. Ejercicio 4. Escucha y escribe las letras correctas del ejercicio 1. 1. Tengo hambre. Quiero... Mmm, un flan. ¿Tú qué vas a tomar? Quiero una Coca-Cola. No tengo hambre, pero tengo sed. ¿Qué va a tomar? Okay. So I'm just going to pause that for a second here. I meant to say they were, they haven't got things in all of these um, places. So you need to decide where you're going to put them. They didn't have a starter or a main course there. They had a pudding and a drink. So think carefully before, you know, you may have nothing in these uh, or nothing in those, but you will find some in, in, um, in different ones on each line. Okay, here's the next one. Un flan, por favor. ¿Y usted qué va a tomar? Una Coca-Cola, por favor. ¿Algo más? Nada más. La cuenta, por favor. Okay, so that was the first one there. And they had a pudding and they had a drink. Okay, number two. Dos. Tengo hambre. Quiero una sopa. ¿Qué vas a tomar? Mm, voy a tomar una ensalada. ¿Qué van a tomar? Una sopa y una ensalada, por favor. ¿Algo de postre? No, gracias. ¿Y para beber? Sí. Eh, agua, por favor. Tres. Tengo hambre. De primer plato quiero unas gambas y una ensalada. ¿Qué vas a tomar? Una ensalada, también. ¿Qué quieres de segundo plato? Quiero pollo. Es muy bueno. Y yo quiero una paella de mariscos. Voy a beber una limonada. ¿Y tú? Para mí, agua. ¿Qué va a tomar? De primer plato, unas gambas y una ensalada, por favor. De segundo plato, quiero pollo. Y quiero beber agua. ¿Y usted? También una ensalada y de segundo plato quiero una paella de marisco. Para beber quiero una limonada. ¿Algo más? Nada más. La cuenta, por favor. Okay, right. So you heard them, they repeated it for you because they discussed it among themselves. And then they repeated it for the waiter or the waitress. So hopefully they gave you a chance to get all the detail. So this first people, they didn't have a first, a first course or a second course. They just had a flan, one of them had, and the other one had um, una Coca-Cola. Okay, numero dos. Their first courses were sopa and ensalada. Second courses, they didn't have, they just wanted the first course. They didn't have dessert either. And for drink, they both had uh, water, agua. Número tres, they were hungry, these ones. As a starter, um, the boy had unas gambas y una ensalada, and then the girl had una ensalada as well. So you should have gambas and dos ensaladas. De segundo plato, uh, he had pollo. He said it was very good, muy, es muy bueno. And she had paella de mariscos. I don't think they had a pudding. No, they didn't. To drink, uh, I can't remember who had which, but one had agua and the other had limonada. Okay, so there's quite a lot of extra um, information there that you could have got uh, about things being good or asking for the bill as well, and not wanting any, anything else. But hopefully you identified the main things that they ate and drank. Okay, so mark your work. Uh, put anything in red that you didn't get, and then think about what it is you need to revise, if it's the, the vocabulary or um, if it's just more practice in terms of listening. Okay, so here, just to review again, our objectives for this week, ordering food in a restaurant, you've done that now, we've you've done, looked at a conversation in a restaurant and you practiced two and usted, and we'll be looking at setting targets to, uh, in lesson three. Thank you very much indeed, year eight. Hasta la próxima.